All right, quick question. Can you tell me who the bad guy is in this picture? All right, what about this one? And this one? And in light of Majority Rule Day, who would you say is the villain in this picture? And this takes us to what we will be discussing today. Now, there's this old idea that in cowboy movies, the way you could tell the difference between a good guy and a bad guy was looking at their hat. Good guys wore a white hat or some dusty variation, and bad guys wore a black hat. This isn't 100% true all of the time. However, in film, there are often some non-verbal cues that alert when someone is the villain of the story. Do they have a funny accent in a James Bond movie? Is their face obscured in a Star Wars movie? Do they dare challenge the status quo of the Spanish colonizers in Dora the Explorer? I mean, like, why is Swiper, the fox, the bad guy? Just because he takes what he wants? I mean, Dora is discovering things all the time. No one says anything. (sighs) Anyway, while I'm tempted to say that using things like tropes and stereotypes is lazy storytelling, the truth is it's more a lack of faith in the audience to appreciate and understand a nuanced tale. Mumra didn't hate the Thundercats. He wanted eternal life. So he had a fear of death. But I mean, who wants to explain existential crisis to the eight-year-old kid on Saturday morning? He looks weird and different and it makes you uncomfortable. It's an easier thing to explain. But stories should be more nuanced than that. I mean, sometimes you find out the guy in the black hat is actually good. Or the guy in the white hat is bad. Or that there are no fully good or bad people, just flawed characters all around. And in that regard, life. That is to say, life is also nuance and stuff. Life is similar. So, what's the point? Majority rule. Did majority rule in 1967 have anything to do with race? Yes. But, I mean, there were black people fighting for the UBP and white people fighting for the PLP. So, although race was involved, I'm inclined to believe that it wasn't solely that. Also, didn't you watch the other videos explaining the superficial nature of race? I mean, come on, guys. I personally believe that it had to do with power and the redistribution of it to the majority. Okay, okay, yes, yes. Uh, The majority of people in the country were and are black. But, like most demographics, you could also draw it along other lines, like saying the majority of people were also at the time undereducated. The majority of people didn't own property. And the majority of people had no real power. Now, whether that power was money, opportunity, a say in how the country was run, that is what the majority came to achieve. Right? Okay, yes. We're closer. But let's not read the fact that we got everyone to wear white hats as a victory. Because at the end of the day, those colors don't mean as much as they did. The reason that the myth about Majority Rule Day only being about color lasted so long because it's an easier story to tell. Uh, The Haitians are taking all of the jobs, the gays are raping our kids, the people in the ghetto are always teething. Generally speaking, it's easier to point at someone that's different and other and be like that person. The one that's different from us is the problem. Focus on eliminating them. But more often than not, we find that problems will still exist even if all of those people are gone or hidden away. Anyway, I'm not asking to forget history or revise or forget all the parts about race. What I'm asking for is that we remember it fully and that majority rule was not all black and white because sometimes the bad guy is wearing the same color hat as you. Why?